Good morning, YouTube. I'm Zachary Fowler, and I'm here in Canada with the Wood Beardsman. We've been out having adventures, and we're just about to go out on an even bigger adventure for seven days to survive with the bear that we got and some more food that we've managed to harvest, some uh, trapped trapped foods there. We've trapped uh, beavers, and we've, uh, we're going to get some uh, when we go up north, we're going to get some birds and stuff. So I uh, thought we'd just have a little live palather with you for now before we head up there. And so how are you guys doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, throw some questions um, in the chat, and I'll try to uh, do my best to address them because I feel like I'm talking to nobody right now. Yeah, he, I'm used to talking to the camera and then editing it after, so this live stuff. So yeah, this might be the only chance to get to ask him questions live because he's not a big, uh, big on doing the live streams, but I talked him into it this morning. So if uh, you leave the questions in the comments there, we'll, uh, we'll get to them. Yeah. Maybe do an at, if you want to talk to me specifically at the wood beardsman and ask a question or whatever. And then, cause if somebody's asking about boots, I don't know if they're asking about my boots or your boots. You can just answer. <laughs> we'll just answer. Yeah. We we'll both answer. Yeah. I got rubber boots and running shoes is what I go with. If it's yeah. wet, I wet rubber boots. It's if it's dry, just wear running shoes. Or the Bob's hiking boots, the same ones I had in Patagonia. Still wearing those. Yeah, look who left Texas. Yeah, I left Texas a long time ago, yeah. actually. But still, some footage coming out. Um, I edited uh, for two weeks when I got back, and then I had seventeen episodes. So yeah, so the the footage that we're doing now, the bear hunt, all of that stuff, uh, and then the seven day wilderness living challenge that we'll be doing will be on both of our channels, and we'll be sharing those. It's probably going to be a month before they come out. So on my channel, they'll be coming out while I'm doing the live streams from Texas um in in my next thing that i got coming up which i haven't told you about yet so that's still secret i wasn't even supposed to do that um <laughs> and uh, so we'll be putting them out at the same time so I'll be looking for those in in about a month's time when we put them up we want to make sure it's all edited and beautiful for you the big adventure that we're having up here i'm up here for two weeks with him hanging out and we've been having a blast already yeah it's been busy yeah real busy hit the ground running <laughs> we did hit the I, ground I hit the ground running i showed up and they're like how you feel about uh you know cleaning out a beaver i'm like sure let's do it you know <laughs> sharpen your knives like you know and they had a bear hanging and then we went out and we went bear hunting got another bear um so yeah we're we're doing pretty good already yeah i'm doing amazing we haven't really been in the wilderness wilderness yet because we have to obey uh certain laws so we can't just go out and do, I can't trap beaver just anywhere. I need to use a license trapper. So that's kind of why we're on private property still, um, taking advantage of uh, connection and all that. Uh, somebody asked about Bob Hansler. He's doing good. Um, I don't know if you guys heard, but he got bit by a snake after his eye trouble. So he went in for cataract surgery. Uh, that got cleared out. His his one eye, he can't see out of his other eye is six times better than when I was there, which is a, a much uh, it's a much improvement. And uh, yeah, he got bit by a snake, so he's in recovery right now. So they say two to four weeks before he's like fully back to normal. So watch out for snakes when you go to Texas. Yeah, that's stay gonna, away. Yeah, <laughs> man, they taste good, but you know, you taste good to them too, I guess, too, right? So they might take a bite out, and that will hurt. Yeah, if you go back to my community post, there is a Bob Hansler post that I put up where you can watch Chris's video, and there's a Patreon link below if you want to contribute to his snake bite fund because those things cost like. He, he, it's going to cost him like $20,000 worth of uh, medical bills for this snake bite. So yeah, eight, that, eight vials, I think it, oh. it was, it was either six or eight. I can't remember right now, but it was a lot. Yeah. So. That's rough. That's a hard one. All right. So where are we? We are yeah, on Ontario, Ontario, yeah, North, North Bay area to be specific. We're going four hours North of North Bay to get more wildernessy than we did last year because uh, there'll be more opportunities for grouse. Uh, Zach wants to get, one with us. Yeah, I want to get a bunch. We're going to do the slingshot versus shotgun this video. See who gets more grouse. <laughs> me with my slingshot or him with the shotgun. Zach already missed one. Yeah. I missed one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. We'll see yeah. if we can't remedy that when we go a little further north. We didn't see many on our trip, did we, with the bear hunt? We saw seven all of a sudden. Yeah. But that was it yeah. for like two days of all the different times we've been out yeah. on, um, on the crown land and things. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, there's they're a lot less skittish uh, the further north you go because they're a lot less pressured. Um, so that's the idea by going up further north. We're more we're kind of going back in time as far as like, yeah. I still got sleep beard going on here. <laughs> I think I do yeah. too. Anyway, yeah, that's the idea is to go where the where there's more game 
to fill in those gaps instead of eating just like big game this time, which yeah. is nice. Like it's good. So yeah, we're pulling out little cheats here and there. We're using refrigeration, like the bears in the freezer and stuff like that, because it's just, you know, if you have a camp set up, you can it's, go do it's it. It's not cheat so much. Like, so you check out his wilderness living challenge, uh, the wooded beardsman channels below. And he's done wilderness living challenge kind of thing that you can look at it in the playlist and watch them as series, uh, series and watch them through. And so this time, instead of going out there and trying to harvest the food and survival at once, we went out, we did the bear hunt, we got the food, and we're going to take it into the territory with us and then try to supplement that with more stuff like ducks, uh, the, the birds, the, you know, some fish and see what the result is of seven days of living like that with all the stuff, kind of more of a, like a homesteadery thing, whereas homesteaders arrive on this location with their food. We're going to have the canoe packed full of stuff, head out there and make a bunch of videos, awesome videos for you guys. I call, I guess I call it cheating because, um, to me, the wilderness living times, you start with nothing yeah. on the first day and then you go starving. But I didn't want to do it this time because um, it could take six days to get a bear or it could never happen. Right? Yeah. And we could just be hunting bear for six days and not ever get a big game animal. In the end, it, and then we, we could have just started for six it. Days. We could have just started this it. time. <laughs> yeah, because we went out, got a bear, spent a whole day out there, made it, I think, an epic video. I think it's going to be pretty awesome hunting bear with dogs. Um, it, it was amazing for me it was an eye-opener because it was like you know you hear all these people like saying that hunting bear with dogs it's so inhumane and that it was nothing like that nothing it was like nothing at all it was like all the romantic pictures of dog hunting you know with the dogs chasing pheasants and stuff it just felt it felt right it felt really right you yeah. know somebody asked if, if i think we're going to be able to keep the weight on better i think zach's going to have a good go at this because he's already keto yeah. Uh, I'm not keto, so I might drop, but we're going to go a little bit longer. Maybe we're going to go seven, maybe longer. Yeah. Right. I might, we may be able to keep up the diet because I've got some things like pre-prepared. So uh, I think on the last, I, I should probably should not give spoilers, but it's, it's been hard to keep my weight up, put it that way. Yeah. yeah in so. the past, but in the past you didn't have start out with the no, food either too. No. So and it was always kind of, we were always kind of behind the eight ball and the challenges and we'd end up with a lot of food near the end uh, that we couldn't eat because we were just, done the challenge already so we couldn't catch up i i could catch up anyway so and yeah this time we have some apples to start off with too could supply them any any them. ideas on dehumidifiers hot rocks if you got wet socks you put a hot rock in your sock or your boot at night if as long as it's not too hot to burn your inserts um i've even had a wet sleeping bag once that was almost impossibly wet and put hot rocks in it and managed to dry it out if you're like in a place like uh, Vancouver Island, it's just like a temperate rainforest. You're going to be almost impossible. It's all about picking the right gear, isn't it? When it comes to keeping moisture out of your gear, you need yeah, stuff or, that, or you just get wet. Yeah, or you yeah, you or you stay wet and swampy. It's and not. It's not. It's not the worst thing that could happen. The most important thing, I think, is just is drying out your socks. Or even at at night, you want to be comfortable and warm. But I don't mind being wet. If it's raining, you get wet. Yeah, like you it, can't fight it too much. It's just. just as long as your feet are dry, as long as you yeah. can keep your well feet healthy too, because yeah. otherwise you get blisters and your feet just start sloughing off skin and your feet are raw. <laughs> yeah. And that's just, so if you could put hot rocks in your socks to dry them out and switch your socks out often. And, and I think the rest of you could be wet all the time. And you'd be okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, hi back to everybody who's saying hi, smash bar, smash bar, smash. How's it going? <laughs> He's late coming in. Uh, yeah. yeah, throw out those questions, guys. If you guys have anything specific, I've never done a live feed, so I've never kind of cleared cleared up or cleared the air as far as what's going on with the wilderness living challenge. I might always meant to do it. It's just I uh, never figured out the tech or never got interested, I guess, enough as Zach kind and, of talked me into doing this this morning. I'm like, let's go. We got to go to the wilderness. So yeah. it'll take a half an hour to do this. Uh, I And you have to forgive us for doing it in a home like this and not being all woodsy because – uh, it's just, there's no, almost no signal here and it cost me like a dollar, a megabyte. So <laughs> I was hoping to set up a live stream and doing it like in the wild for you guys and be like a, a real wild live stream, like right after we got the bear or something cool like that. But those will just have to wait for the videos when we post those. Yeah. We'll be posting our videos at within a month or so. So keep looking for those. We'll probably throw up a trailer or some more teaser or something like that before it comes out to let you know when the thing is going to be released. And you can get to his channel down below, The Wooded Beardsman. You can check out and go watch his earlier uh, in the playlist, Wilderness Living Challenge series, and see what it was like for him then and compare that to the, our series when we release those. We'll be 
both of us releasing videos at the same time on our channels. Yeah. And we're hoping they're going to be complementary rather than copy, copy. Yeah. Like Jack's going to put his own spin on things. He's been vlogging along. I've been vlogging along because it's just the pace we're at right now. Yeah. Things are going to slow down and then we're going to probably tackle different angles. Yeah. Uh, Zach will have different themes on his videos and I'll have different themes on mine. Mine's always more raw, I think, than yeah. He's, he's right. going to be more crafty. I get carried away with like several <laughs> different cameras, drones, <laughs> yeah, and all exactly. the other stuff. And hey, we got to stop and everybody. Get the yeah. drone out. Like well, we're actually it's, chasing it's, the bear. So it'll be more. It'll be enjoyable enough that you can watch. You know, my perspective on day one and his perspective on day one, and there'll be separate stories enough that it'll be yeah epic. I think it'll be worth watching both. Put yeah. it that way. Yeah. That's I think what the message is is like you're gonna be able to watch one and then be able to watch the other, and then you're not gonna there's gonna be a little bit of overlap on the main themes. Yeah, uh, the locations obviously, and the, I might be in the background and you, you'll be in the background of mine, but it'll work. Yeah. Um, somebody asked what time it was earlier. It's uh, almost noon here, so we're yeah. we're late. We're late. I, I feel he's like antsy late. to get out the door, and I'm trying to fulfill the last bits of stuff. Um, those of you that are just asking questions, if you want to support my channel, there's links below for Fowler's Maker and Mischief.com where you can see all the fun stuff that I use in the videos, slingshots, things like that. And if you place orders right now, don't worry, they will come through. Chris, my apprentice, is at home. He's fulfilling orders, ordering stuff for the website, and keeping the ball rolling there. It'll all be shipped on time and in a timely manner to you. So thank you guys for shopping. And my Amazon link is also below where you can get all the stuff that you see in the videos that we don't sell on our website and my 10 items like I had on a loan, as well as the ketogenic foods and things that I eat to keep up with my ketogenic diet at times. Somebody asked what you're gonna shoot with a slingshot. Uh, what, what I'm gonna shoot, we're gonna try, there's rabbits supposedly up there and the hair, snowshoe hair, snowshoe hair and the birds. So uh, uh, bur uh, grouse is the main one. They're going to yeah, be the dumbest grouse. ones. We're yeah. hoping there's going to be some dumb ones. Um, duck, if, duck, if maybe, it's possible. Maybe if duck. there's some really slow moving uh, and geese, dumb ducks that yeah, they're willing to sit we, still. We can't hunt squirrels. Um, we're too far away. The blacks and the grays. Uh, I I have them in my neck of the woods, uh, south of here, uh, but they're not they're not woodsy animals. They're more like city pests. Yeah, the grays and the blacks. So we have red squirrels, and they're fur bearing. They're considered fur bearing mammal here in uh, Ontario. So you need a trapper license, and you can only get them through trapping. Technically, actually, you can actually shoot them, but you just end up ruining the pelt. So we can't uh, shoot the red squirrels here. Otherwise, you could probably peg off a whole bunch of them. Oh right, yeah. They just chatter at you in the tree. So I saw them the other day, and I was like, oh, tempting, tempting. <laughs> uh, would I ever use an air gun? I'd like to look into that when I get back and do like an air rifle versus slingshot video. I am planned on doing a bunch of uh, slingshot versus video at some point. Maybe this winter would be a good time for that kind of stuff, getting into it, get myself a really, they have some really nice air rifles. They're like 22 versions. Somebody asked about what knife. Uh, I've got a Grohlman Skinner knife on me right now. And <laughs> it looks like it needs a little cleaning. Like I didn't quite yeah. clean it off, yeah. but uh, there's some proof that we got into uh, we use that there already. Yeah, we used that to scun <laughs> out the bear yesterday. Went quick with that knife. That's a nice knife. It works real well. So that's yeah. the, that's the Grohlman. I've got, I brought the Skinner because I knew we were going to be looking at big game. And the, the uh, Trout and Bird, it's a smaller knife, and it's good for... Uh, a small game that you know, that bird. work the trout bird will work on anything but this works really well when you're skinning just that bear you know, went fast motion, with the that motion that you want you know the blade how the shape of the blade so every shape of the blade is a little bit different i have another little mini skinner too i'll probably bring in i don't we're not going to be doing any more big game now i don't think well how did it smell the bear the bears has an interesting smell it's not really yeah. bad there was it like when i was up with the hind legs and working on it it i I smelt like a, a more gamey smell to it, but I didn't notice strong. anything else. Yeah, he had a slightly strong, strong, but not uh, not off-putting smell. You know, mm -hmm. it was. You know, no, it wasn't gross. It wasn't like oh, I'm, I'm gonna cringe when I eat this. The beaver, a little bit different. Beaver's beaver. Did, tell him about. So there is a bit of a thing. We got to make sure we cook the bear well. Yes. Uh, so bears are known to carry what's called trichinosis. Um, Trichinosis is the same thing that can be found in pigs, although they've almost eradicated it from pigs completely. Don't mind the phone. My mom's going to grab it. Right, my mom says. Mom, get the phone! Man! <laughs> so, uh, what was I saying? Trichinosis, yes. Trichinosis, so pigs carry it. It's basically from eating meat infected with the cyst, and the cyst uh, is in the meat. And so when you eat the meat and you digest it, the cyst will open up in your stomach and release the adult. The adult will bur burrow through your digestive system in your stomach and migrate into your muscle tissues. And then it'll insist there for life. 
So you'll have permanently have cysts in your body. So we have to cook, we have to well, has to be cooked 160. Don't don't quote me on that, but 160, I think. So pretty low temperature, but you don't want to be eating pink uh bear meat. So that's a concern. If you do get it, it's not a big deal. You'll get you'll get like flu-like symptoms for a week or so, and then you'll permanently have uh cysts in your body, in your muscle tissue. So yeah, so it's something we've got to be very careful of. Everything we do, we're like probably like we'll do it if we do it. What do we think? If we do a steak, we steaks may... is like steaks is one of the ones that you got to be real careful. Yeah, so like I... a steak on the fire is one like you, it ends up being a little pink on the inside. Yeah, see, I was thinking we would stew the steaks and then we'd fry it in the bare fat, so it's stewed good, and then we get that little seared bit on the outside. Yeah, or we smoke it and then we then we stew it for the smoked stewed flavor. So anything we do is probably going to be either stewed good or double cooked somehow. Yeah, if you've watched like my channel at all, you know I love stewing because. I, you know, you have a, you have a, you have a, you're, you're eating vessel, a cup or a bowl or whatever, and you can just, every once in a while, just scoop it and drink the broth and eat it. And you don't have to mess around with like the fire. The fire goes out and the lid's on the cast iron. It's going to be fine for a few hours, like even half a day overnight. Oh, you know? oh yeah. Over yeah, any stew you can in a, like a Dutch oven, you could, you just have to heat it up to a boil again to sanitize it every yeah. 24 hours. Yeah, and exactly. you could go forever soup and like as long I, as it's fully cooked i made the mistake of not fully cooking a stew once and then the next morning it was like not it was it, it was had, gross it had spoiled oh really yeah it was oh. a hot hot october day uh 25 degrees in the day and we think we thought we had it fully cooked but it was dark and we didn't stir it around enough so some of the parts were still red and it smelled bad i mean we probably could have still if we're not looking at hot temperatures though it's already um especially when we go north yeah it's it's like 39 almost, degrees this morning almost below freezing oh uh, yeah so as, zero, as we go freezing. north it's we may get some below, uh, frost and below freezing evenings and stuff so it should be interesting yeah we get a lot of flack for stewing but yeah you gotta you gotta do a spit roast and all this stuff but it's all on it's so impractical to do it that way there's I a reason wanna, people use ca invented cast iron and just left it yeah you could just leave it and and it's sanitary, uh, a lot more sanitary. Yeah. And you get we're going to be souping and you know get that stew liquid, so you're always getting more liquids to you with the, um, especially the making soluble the different parts that are melting down and gets those things into your body and you get more out of it. You always get more out of I think soup and stuff in your body. So you Way can more. easily digest it. it you're going to get so much more value out of it than just like cooking it and having your fats and stuff drip into the fire and wasting them. We're going to take one leg and I'm going to try and smoke it and stuff like that for like the majority of the time we're there. And then at the end, turn it into, you know, cuts and like maybe pan sear it and then stew it a little bit so that it's like makes it really cool, you know, melts in your mouth type meal. Yeah. Somebody asked about, not forgetting about bones. Absolutely. hundred percent. We're going to be eating bone marrow. hundred yeah. percent. We'll debone it or, or I'll throw the bones in the broth. Like it, it's all going to get used hundred percent. The bear fat is excellent fat. It's something that, People in this area, Native Americans, really depended on as far as calories. That stuff's very, very dense in calories. So we will make use of any fitting bone. And it's all palatable fat, not like deer fat. Deer fat's a little bit, uh, it's it's not the good consistency. But this stuff, you almost put it in your hand and it melts. It's like you're cutting it off the animal and your mouth is watering because you know good things are coming. A little bit of salt and flavor in that fat. And you can fry anything in it, fish. Uh, fish and grouse, and then you know you can put a duck in there, but the duck's going to be fatty enough. Yeah, making already, me hungry right? already. I'm like, mm. so we just got to go get more stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I uh, think we're, chicken, we got we got like a lot of bare fat too. Man, the amount of fat that came off. Yeah. So we're going to play around with that, like being able to cook the stuff in it, and uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. Trichinosis and the bone marrow. Not that I know of. It's just the muscle thing. But even so, the the bone marrow is going to be cooked. We're not just like sucking it not out of the bone raw. Bone marrow. You know, we're going to be cooking it, you know, it's like, it'll be good. Uh, what? Jerky, somebody does moose jerky, perhaps. Trade, I, trade bear for moose jerky, sure. I did bring the gold steel shovel, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And my uh, go-to slingshot is going to be the Axiom Ocularis. Uh, it takes a wider band, so that way I'll be able to definitely take out the birds and rabbits when I get a shot. Uh, my uh, Hornet slingshot that we released on the website is, uh, it's not, it's more of a target slingshot. It's not that powerful for that, so that'll be interesting. Be fun. Yeah, I don't know if, they, if you guys are what your audience. I don't know if we have much overlap in our audience. Like it doesn't seem like it seems like you know you look at the recommended and sometimes your name come, is there, sometimes not. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how, how much works. overlap we have and as far as subscriber base, but I don't know if you guys know what the word list of every challenge is all about. It's about not losing weight. It's about not starving, thriving. 
Um, but we do weigh ourselves. We'll weigh ourselves and then we'll decide. Yeah, we'll know. weigh in at the beginning, which I'm weighing in at a, about a 205 right now, I think, or, or 203. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm literally only like 30 pounds of, from what I was before alone. Yeah. And uh, I think the worst is where we've ever done is around a pound and a half I've lost per day. Yeah. And Jeremy, I think the worst was about two pounds per day. I don't think I'll be losing a huge amount because I'm already in a ketogenic state like diet will you try to keep your weight up in the spirit of the competition oh yeah you yeah. will eat like a pig yeah yeah you will just scarf like if you gain weight there's you're not gonna i'm always there's, gonna out eat you i I'm that's like, true but i'm like always i'm a big eater i just i've had i've had like jeremy's like he doesn't really care if he loses weight because he wants to be in better shape when he comes out and then bob was kind of like i want to get i want to get more fit so i don't really care if i lose a little bit of chub i have something coming after this in another month that i need that right. weight for so yeah. i can't afford to lose okay. too much weight otherwise i got to go home and eat more pizzas and bonbons and I, re- I don't even like sugar anymore these days. You know, I, like I crave all those things, but if I ever switch out for a day and eat a donut, I feel like, ugh, I, I don't yes. like sugar anymore. Uh, Ready Group says there's no, re- there is little reason to suffer out in the bush, and that's exactly right. What, what I don't, I, I, the reason I invented this challenge is because I hate being hungry. Yeah, I just hate being hungry. I hate the idea of like going out and starving, um, and just doing survival. I guess I call this, uh, you know, you know, I call it wilderness living because it should be something I can do indefinitely, and that's the goal. Is to figure out how I can do it in a modern environment, how, how I can just keep going forever and ever and ever. So if you want to watch the previous episodes or seasons of Wilderness Living Challenge, hit up the Wood to Beardsman link below in the description. You can watch his channel and you will be able to see the the Wilderness Living Challenge in the playlist and watch the previous seasons. Get yourself ready for you know the difference between that one and this one where you have lots of food. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's writing some things to disrupt things. Disruptive, <laughs> wasteful people. Here. Yeah, I can't yeah. see all your comments. I've never had to actually do that before. It's like, <laughs> I have you on my channel, and all of a sudden, all the haters come along. Dude, I don't know. What do you think? Okay, so we, you've seen me in person. You know what I'm about, yeah. right? I, I do collect my my group of people who just don't can't stand what I'm doing because they uh, maybe they, half of them don't understand it. Half of them, half the time, I'm just eating their favorite animal. Like, I don't know. I, I, I get all variety of different comments. Uh, obviously, there's tons of support. Like, the support far outweighs the, you know, the hate. Um, the only thing that you're doing more than regular subsistence hunting livers, living people are doing, you know, people that hunt for living, you know, to, to survive with their families is sometimes eating a skunk or two, you know, and, and, you, and you're filming it. So you're not doing anything more normal. You're not eating any more meat than people that eat meat on a regular basis and go to the grocery store. Are we and wasting anything? We're not wasting. If anything, we utilize more than other people do when you hunt. Cause like yeah. a lot of people hunt and they just scoop everything out on the ground, leave it. We, you know, we harvested the livers and the, and the heart and all that stuff and all the organs to like be as um, responsible as possible and get the most out of it. Sure. We didn't take the intestines to try to make sausages on the spot but it's like, hard to do it's hard to do that's like, a lot it's not impossible if we had a homestead like we had a group of people in homestead like here's the yeah the casings you guys are making sausage today we're going to go back out and hunt like it's it's hard when you're not set up that way but we don't waste things and we're not, are we doing it just for a video is it that, is that <laughs> the only reason we're doing i like it? this question can you can you pull some strings to get the wooded beardsman on alone I, I, there's, there's probably no chance in the world. In fact, I'm probably now a pariah of a loon. I probably will not be accepted for a loon all stars because I'm hanging out with this guy. I don't know why. It's, uh, I've been critical of the show. But he loves I, it. I love the show. Don't get it wrong. I love the show. I just wish they would, I would wish they would make it more, not easier, but more doable. I want to see yeah. people succeed on the show. And it bothers me that they're in an environment where I think it's almost impossible for them to do it. Um, given the gear or the laws or the regulations or the seasons or the, like I said, the locations, the environments, the animals, it just, it just, I've done it. I've tried to do it. You know, this is my fourth time trying to do it. And I kind of have a good sense of what it takes. And I just don't see being able to do it with 10 items. And like, even and in all that honesty, here didn't like, do it. he doesn't even really want to be on the show anymore because he likes yeah. doing his own thing with YouTube yeah, and I think it would drive you nuts watching the show and seeing how little of your footage oh, for sure, ends up. You would like you'd be like, "What? Why didn't it show me 
you know, doing yeah. this. Why didn't it, it's like it's frustrating to watch that. If, at times. if Alone's actually watching this, if Alone is actually watching this, I don't know. I sometimes you guys, I think you guys do watch my stuff because you know what I'm talking about and the reason why you probably don't like me that much. No. But, um, I'll I just go out and iron hunt. I just I would just sit there literally for 12 hours a day, all daylight hours and hunt. Yeah, I would just set up a blind with a with a recurve bow and try to get a big game animal and eat it till I had to go home. That, that's all yeah. I would do because that's the only way I could do it. I can't. I don't have the body fat. Well, you know, and and per your survival tactic, where he, you know, his he said it before about uh, alone is to go out there and don't burn calories, do nothing. Whereas I go out there and I build a million things to keep myself entertained and comfortable but I burn all these calories. He doesn't have the extra calories to burn because he's a skinny guy. Not possible. And, uh, and so he would go out there and just sit in a blind. And so he wouldn't burn any calories. And if he got the animal, he'd be able to stay there longer, which could end up paying off a lot better than hard to say, than working your butt off, catching all these fish and then not catching fish and then struggling, starving and things. You'd probably, you'd obviously set all of your hooks out too. Oh, for sure. If you're allowed to have yeah, pass, I'd fish passive like, night lines, you'd have passive, all I'm, every hook I'm, sitting out there on I'm trout sure. lines. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fisher and a hunter. That's what I am. Yeah. Uh, Dave Nessie, I think pretty much enacted my strategy. Yeah. Like I would do his strategy. He just wasn't successful because you know, how do you get a, how do you get a deer in that environment? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. On the last season, he like, he tried and tried. tried. It just, he just, he just nothing walked through, you yeah. know, he'd do as much as he can. And then, and nothing, nothing comes. Then you don't get a, you don't get a kill. So um, we've been very fortunate. We are out there. Got a bear. Got some beavers. We're going to be going up north, and we'll be filming our seven day wilderness living challenge. You know, you can check out Chris's channel below, uh, the Wooded Beardsman, and to watch his earlier seasons in the playlist Wilderness Living Challenge. This time we're heading out there with a starter of the food that we've hunted, and once we get out there, we're just going to have just that and what we brought with us our usual kit that you guys see on both of our channels with our gear and stuff and hanging out in the woods. And we'll be sharing those videos with you. Look for those in about a month when we're posting them on both of our channels at the same time. It was Pity's mom. She's a big fan of both of us. Oh yeah. Recognize her. She's always tuning in. So hi. don't often get to do shout outs anymore. Um, somebody said they're making a beaver uh, rug. That's pretty cool. we got some good fans out there. Is there a rule on a loan that says you are not allowed to hunt bear? Uh, it all depends on the place that you are, what's in season and what they can arrange. That's the, one of the hardest things about picking a location. People don't realize it's like you have to have a location where all these things are permissible. And that's why they have a hard time, I think, putting it together because, you know, to be able to bring them to a place where you can primitively trap uh, in America, all those yeah. things are illegal, leaving out just even leaving out more than night lines at all or leaving out more than one fishing line or two fishing lines that are not continually um, watched, you, can, you can't do it. So it's like that just reduces your odds of catching a fish when you're allowed 25 hooks. What's the point of being allowed 25 hooks if you can't leave 25 hooks out there fishing for you? So it's it's hard. Yeah. The laws are hard. I mean, the laws are hard here. And I'm just trying to find ways to work around the laws. Like nuisance beavers is the only ones we can trap unless we get on a trap line. and But that'll be dependent on the trapper. Because I can't trap myself. I don't have a trap line. And to get a trap line is like a, it's a 10 year project because yeah. you have to apply for it and there's only certain quotas and there's only certain trap lines. So it's, you got to hook up with other people in order to make this happen legitimately. Yeah. Hunting licenses are expensive. I spent what, $200, 200 for, small for, game. for small game and fish. It's like, that's, that was like, I'm not going to get a big game license and, you know, try for the big game myself because, you know, for the amount of money I'd end up having to spend about another 600 for big game license and and maybe maybe next year if you guys want to donate <laughs> then and see me do a hunt that way the, the be the one that does the big game hunt then uh yeah somebody wants to know if you got your lumberjack pie jacket when you showed up i'm supposed to give you a longer like official, the lumber, you, official, official lumberjack yeah, become a canadian no i didn't we only wear those when it gets colder oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what else somebody somebody said the the you the alone likes to make people fail like to see people fail and that's i don't think so i think they want the people to succeed i just don't think they know enough about how to make it um conducive to have people succeed on the show i think it's like you said it's tricky 10 items location rules laws uh and then of course there's finding the right people who would actually go out and hunt uh successfully and i think it's a little bit of a different subset from the people that they're picking right now where they're kind of picking characters or 
um, the village people kind of thing where they've got a, a bunch of different personalities rather than just a bunch of like 10 people from Northern Ontario probably do pretty darn good on the show. Cause they're all about hunting and fishing, right? Like how many people have you come across are just like rooting around hunting, fishing and all that stuff. The guy we were with, he's like, he's a, he's a, he's a hunter, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what he would do. So kind of, it's kind of what we do up here. That's like all he does almost like he was so excited. He, to get he, he was pumped. He was pumped. He, he, he was as excited he, as we he, were. Yeah. What was um, the name of Matthew? Matthew is um, uh, Kennels. What's it? I forget the name. Oh, we're horrible it's about so this. So bad. You'll see it in the videos coming yeah, along. We're... Matthew. Uh, if you guys want to go on a really awesome bear hunt where you don't have to know anything about hunting, go go hook up with Matt and we'll you'll you'll see the details when the videos come out. He was yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was a it was a really unique and interesting way to hunt rather yeah. than just sit on a bait. And you guys might be upset that we sat on baits too, but we'll talk about that more. Yeah. When the videos come out, it's, it's not what people think it is. It's not, it's not a slam dunk. It's not easy. It's not guaranteed. He had nine baits out and none of them were hit. Yeah. So, it's a lot of work. It's, it's not, it's, uh, not, it's not a guarantee. The dog it's hunting thing. Easy. It's I, not like, cruel. It's not. Yeah. I wasn't sure how I felt about that. You know, I think I've even heard people talk about dog hunting being cruel and all this stuff in the past and maybe like nodded my head. Yeah. That does sound kind of cruel. And then we did this and it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was, you know, uh, it was just the dogs are amazing. They're such good natured. They were, you know, if if a dog could be respectful of the hunt, it was. I mean, it's hard to explain. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't savage and just unfair to the bear. No, oh, the bear. Know. The it's like getting chased by a pack of wolves, and you're not going to stop stop a pack of wolves from doing it. So why would you stop us from doing it? We're predators. Yeah. Just and it's like as almost wolves. it's almost impossible to get a bear without doing it, like either at a bait site or. Um, you know, uh, and there are so many bears here. There's it's, guys, the guys that hunt bears, like in their natural habitat are, are usually hunting deer and the bear happens to be wandering through. They're not purposely going out to hunt bears and we need to hunt bears where we are. The yeah. raw, our Matt had uh, taken out 30 bears in a very, very small area near the city, um, that if he doesn't take out, will end up bothering people, get in their trash, um, eating their dogs. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not being serious about that but they they not the dogs but they into the trash and the they trash have been known to kill dogs because they stealing dog food and then the dogs yeah. don't like it and then the dogs get killed because right if the dogs uh, penned in and then penned in and the bear wants the food and they aggressive towards the bear it's just not good news to be that dumps to the dumps animal. have bears here that the gal they Go can ahead. do to keep them away from dumps and have to harvest nuisance bears out of the cornfields all yeah. the time and the bears come right back there's not it's not even putting a dent in the population so um, it's just like any other hunting, though, you know, I mean, uh, so it's it's a good thing. And we were very we had a great time. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Setting traps for beavers is not super exciting, but it's one of those. It's so easy. Like we I learned that last year. It was like just so easy to do. Season two, I guess we did the beaver traps and it was like. If you have beaver caster they and you mess up their dam they're all going to come in and those traps are super effective and super humane as as humane as a most trap uh instant death yeah as far as somebody said something about like they weren't sure about the ratings for a long they like to see people suffer i just like to see people successful i hate seeing people suffer i i i'd love to see somebody just like a little bit of struggle. I like the struggle, I like the whole thing. I like the, you know, they're getting low and they're getting high off of the success. I like to see more success in the show. I want to see somebody get a big game. In. I want to see somebody gain weight. I want to see somebody thrive out there. Yeah. It's it's painful to watch. Yeah. And I find it very cruel. I like to feed people, I guess. So Zach's up here and he's going to get fed. Yeah. So. I, I'll be taking the war bonnet hammock. We're not going to be building primitive shelters. The, the point of the wilderness living challenge thing is to, to eat and remain uh, a sustainable weight, not losing weight, you know, be healthy and not dragging your heels uh, to be able to continue to uh, harvest more fish and game because we have the energy to do so and not to, to end up worse than when we came in. So that's going to be the point. You can check out his channel link below and uh, watch the old playlist of his earlier seasons of Wilderness Living Challenge to see what it, the uh, end result was was when he went out to try to hunt and do it all right from the start. Whereas this time we've went out and done the hunts. And now we're taking that game with us into the wild, going to canoe out and camp and eat and try to get more food while we're out there. Somebody asked when the videos will be live. We talked about that before, but it'll be about a month. Um, 
at least two weeks by the time we're done. Like it's going to be another two weeks before we're done plus two weeks edit. So it's probably. About yeah. Long. So you're, we're looking at the end of October, the beginning of November. We'll keep you updated. Maybe po post a trailer sometime in between to, to let you know what's going on and, and, uh, and community posts to remind you that we're still alive and, and still making it happen, making the dream alive. Uh, so I think we're going to head on out on our adventure. We still got to finish cleaning that, uh, butchering the bear and packing our stuff and head four hours north. We'll be off grid. You won't be hearing anything for, more from me. So this will be the last video on my channel for possibly up to two weeks because uh, I am going to be gone having adventures. So look for that when we get back. If Maybe if we can uh, arrange it, we'll come back and we'll do a live stream and you can see how if we look, if we look all happy and healthy or if we're all like, oh. I just can't wait for cookies. Okay, yeah. wait. So, so Serge writes, please, can you answer my question? I asked 20 times. Uh, when oh. are you going to continue the amazing 20-foot tree? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, missed that one. The uh, uh, I'm probably not going to continue that one. I might do a going out there in the fall and using it as my deer stand when I get home for a deer hunt. Um, I, I owe the kids a tree house. So I'm probably going to start over at my house in not out in the woods and build like some sort of a star wars tree fort for my kids with uh swinging bridges and stuff like that as this fall goes on so um before i head out on my next adventure i'm gonna try and get something done for them um special for my kids so uh, i'll get to keep doing every once in a while if i can i'll maybe do a live stream when i get home from that and uh some more maybe a little cooking up there in the tree and things but i'm not going to build it more epic this year because there's some other big big things that are going to be happening after this big thing I got another really big thing for you. So one last question. Somebody asked about shelters and stuff. I think that the overall thing is like we're using all the modern amenities we can possibly dream up to make this possible. Yeah. So it's kind of SHTF. Like at SHTF, you're not going to lose your tent. There's still, there's still going to be tents. There's still going to be guns and ammo and probably a little bit of gas. And this is like, you know, if, if all of a sudden the chain of food that you normally have in grocery stores just kind of is done and you run out, like, can you go off into the wilderness and still survive? Metal traps aren't going to disappear overnight. You're still going to be able to raid guys, trappers, you know, stash and steal his traps and metal traps and all those things. So you're going to still have that stuff around. So it's like modern, it's modern wilderness living, right? It's SHTF kind of modern wilderness yeah, living. Yeah, as if we were a couple of, not primitive. A couple of single guys that, if, as if we were, live in the bush. That could, you know, and we were like, but like something went bad. And the uh, what do you say? SST SHTF, like she's a fan, yeah. So, know, it, as if that, yeah. yeah, as if that happened, we head out to the woods and they're like, boom, we're gonna get away from everything and let the uh, apocalypse hit yeah. while Armageddon, we head out in the woods. Global we're pandemic, take, we're gonna take our nice warp, my nice warm bonnet hammock, you got a nice tent, yeah, and, nice. and our gear and some food with us, and see if we get more food while we're out there and if we can live comfortably yeah and uh it's my contention that i don't think you can go actually go out anymore and live off 10 items I, there's yeah. only one tribe or two tribes in the whole world who are actually just living primitively in the wild anymore and they're we're not very just, very small places and they're, they're only like five feet tall or something uh, then they're like 180 pounds like or 80 pounds like the go if you're not 80 pounds and five foot tall you're gonna have a hard time feeding yourself on a daily living off the land we're not primitive. just camping though we're not bringing like propane grills and no we're cooking on fires and yeah just, there's a lot we got like water. dutch ovens cast irons things like that not uh we're not living in a house yeah yeah so we'll have our tents and those are almost the tents will almost be our only modern amenity kind of thing fishing both. rods guns fishing rods it's and like guns would yeah but those stuff. those are like hunting gear you know so we, we're taking Tent hunting gear days. to go out minus the propane cookers and little, you know, ultralight pots and pans. And, you know, we're not bringing like, uh, we're not bringing like a couple pounds of butter and salt. Yeah. We'll have like some seasonings and things like that. There's one question you should make a raft. Now we're going to get hooked back into this, but you should make a raft. Like, we got we the don't canoe. have time to make rafts. Yeah. When you're trying to eat, you just don't have time to. This is, this is about uh, food and keeping up the body it's weight and surviving that way. Not, um, not a build off. Like uh, yeah, bushcraft build off. We could do that some other time. You know, I'll be making all kinds of weird things, and he'll be sitting over there going, "What's he doing now? What's he building now?" But other than that, while well, well, he's eating, I'll, I'll be like, oh, "I just thought I'd whittle myself uh, a canoe." You know? No. Yeah, fat, lots of fat. That's exactly. Lots of fat. The bear fat. Everything is gonna be cooked in fat, and yeah, and store. We're gonna try and like I'm gonna do a little thing where we render some fat, and we're gonna store some meat and fat for the end of the trip so we open it back up and cook it that way and show like primitive storage 
things and uh and hopefully get a bunch of game with a slingshot it's going to be awesome yep so i think that pretty much covers it i know you guys still have millions of questions you're gonna have to wait you can leave them in the comments below and maybe we can get back to them get to your questions when we get back and make sure you check out chris's channel down below the wooded beardsman wilderness living challenge you can look at his earlier seasons and see how those turned out for him and the difference will be in this season where we're starting out with the food that we've hunted it's going to be awesome. We'll be videos on both of our channels within a month's time around the end of October, beginning of November, where the videos will start coming out. And be sure to subscribe, like, and if you're interested in all the gear that you see on my channel, you can get them on Fowler's Maker and Mischief.com, Slingshots, Survival Gear, or on my Amazon store with all the fun stuff you see in the videos. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys when we get back from the wilderness. Have a great day. Fowler out.